Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this beautiful formation that you see right here on the screen and a new discovery coming from a nearby galaxy. And more specifically we're going to be talking about how spiral galaxies form, how they actually get the structure that we're so familiar with. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And let's start with the simulation of a typical spiral galaxy. So this is um, from Universe Sandbox, this is what we believe most of them might look like, although here we can even change the number of spiral arms just to see what some of the other galaxies might look like. All of this should be pretty familiar because for the most part when you think of a galaxy or when someone brings up the idea of a galaxy, I think most people will probably imagine something like this even though this is actually not even the most common galaxy out there. But nevertheless, spiral galaxies are sort of like the mental prototypes for what we think of when we think of a galaxy. Now, what most people don't actually realize is that these spiral arms are not actually physical objects, or in other words, they're not really permanent objects. And some of the more recent investigations from uh, NASA kind of prove this point, and they even explain how all of this forms. So, the study that just recently came out uh, was studying the nearby galaxy known as NGC 1068, also known as M77 or Messier 77. This is what this galaxy sort of looks like in Space Engine, although if you were to look at it, some of the images coming directly from NASA, it is honestly one of the most beautiful galaxies out there. It is absolutely gorgeous, it's about 47 million light years away from us, so about 20 times the distance of um, Earth to the Andromeda galaxy, but if you have a big enough telescope, you can easily spot this. Although chances are you're not going to actually see this. This is coming from Hubble telescope. And if you were to zoom into this galaxy, you would discover a much larger and much more active galaxy than the Milky Way. Here, there are a lot more stars. There's also a lot more activity. There is an active galactic nuclei in the middle, making this what we refer to as a Cipher 2 galaxy. And somewhere in there, somewhere in the middle, hides a very massive a supermassive black hole, approximately twice as massive as the one in the middle of our own galaxy. But nevertheless, this is a spiral galaxy, and this is a very exciting spiral galaxy. There's a lot of things here for us to study. And because it's so active, it has so many stars and so much stuff here happening, it's also um, a very interesting place for us to investigate theories and ideas about galactic formations. And so, by using one of the coolest telescopes in existence, the SOFIA telescope, which is basically an airplane with a telescope inside of it, and honestly this is one place I would really really love to visit one day, but anyway, so by using the SOFIA telescope, and by looking at this galaxy in um, a very specific frequency, and more specifically by using the infrared cameras uh, fitted inside the SOFIA telescope, this is actually also from NASA, an image of what a typical person would look like if you were to use an infrared camera. The scientists behind this paper started seeing a lot of really, really interesting things. Things that help us understand how all of the galactic structures form. Now, infrared astronomy in general is super important for us because it allows us to see things we would not be able to see otherwise. Because pretty much most of the objects in the universe emit some sort of radiation, and very often it's actually infrared radiation. For instance, some of the largest and some of the more mysterious rogue planets or brown dwarfs or basically really, really, really hard to see otherwise planets out there are often really bright if you were to look at them in infrared radiation. And this is essentially how we discovered the closest brown dwarfs to us known as Loman 16a and b. You can see the image in the infrared right here. But anyway, we're getting kind of sidetracked. So, by using the infrared radiation, they were able to see these unusual patterns. And these patterns, when analyzed in a little bit more detail, started to reveal a very beautiful picture of actual magnetic field of this galaxy, which was then sort of visualized as this, the image that you see right here. So, the galaxy that you see right here, if you were to look at it in infrared and try to imagine the magnetic lines here, you would actually see something like this. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most beautiful pictures I've seen in quite a while. But the important feature here is not actually the visual representation, but the fact that 
If you were to zoom in on those lines and if you were to analyze them and compare them to the formations that we call spirals or spiral arms that is, they start forming a very interesting and quite obvious image and they actually help us explain what's going on here. So first of all, the formations that we call spiral arms, as I mentioned before, are not actual structures. They are instead sort of like, I guess in some sense, channels or more specifically density fields. And these density fields are formed by the magnetic field of the galaxy. So this visible structure here is actually a magnetic line. And these magnetic lines allow for matter to come in and to leave. So, in other words, if you were to look really, really closely here, you would actually see something like this. Now, this was an image created by this wonderful person, and it sort of demonstrates the so-called density wave theory. And this was actually um, kind of a hypothesis that someone proposed a while ago, but it's now getting more and more uh, proof that it's exactly what's happening here. Basically, if you look really closely, you'll notice that, let's just say these are stars. Some of these stars come into the galactic arm, they sort of linger around a little bit, and then they leave after a while. So these formations, these visible formations, are basically just sort of illusions. They're areas of higher density of stars and matter, but they're not really permanent. They always exchange matter that comes and goes, comes and goes. But most importantly, it helps us explain or kind of prove why galaxies don't seem to look like this. This is the so-called winding problem. And the way that this works is basically if you were to imagine a typical galaxy, let's just say this is also a spiral galaxy with, I don't know, like five arms. And if you were to think of each star here as being inside of that arm pretty much uh, at all times and sort of orbiting regularly around the galaxy, with time, in a typical spiral galaxy, you would start seeing this. It would wind itself. It would start creating smaller and smaller, um, I guess you can call them spirals. And eventually it would sort of look like this. It would look like these concentric rings. And we don't see this anywhere in the universe. None of it looks like this. And on the other hand, if a typical galaxy was just one piece of like disk, for example, where everything is just one singular uh, connected object, then it would still look similar to what you see here. But that's also not really what we're seeing. And we know that the stars do move around inside the galaxy, coming and going from the spirals as they please. So in other words, we're not really seeing either one of those examples. Instead, what we're seeing is predicted exceptionally well by this density wave theory. And this is what it sort of looks like if you were to simulate this on a computer. And this is a brilliant proof of what was a theory and wasn't really proven until now. In other words, by looking at this beautiful galaxy and by also looking at it in a very specific light, in a very specific um, frequency of light, we were able to establish that the density wave theory is probably the best explanation to why galaxies have spirals, why they maintain these spirals, and what these spirals even are. So in other words, it's not really actual physical objects. It's just sort of like an appearance of an object almost like a visual illusion formed by these exceptionally strong magnetic fields present in pretty much all of the galaxies. And not surprisingly, even recently, I've talked about how we've discovered that when the Voyager 2 probe left the solar system, it actually found itself in the middle of a relatively strong magnetic field. So in other words, we know that these magnetic fields are responsible for forming really large structures in various galaxies. And by looking at our beautiful neighbor here, we were finally able to once again prove the idea that we kind of suspected was true, but now we are pretty certain that it's true. And so hopefully now you understand what these spirals are and how these spirals form anyway, and why they are also so permanent and look very similar to what you see in other galaxies as well. Basically, these are magnetic fields, or more specifically, these are magnetically influenced density fields in the middle of the galaxy, created by the interaction of various magnetism in the galaxy itself as it rotates and as it spins around. Now, I'm kind of oversimplifying things here, but this is the gist of it, and I'm sure in the next few years we'll discover something else that will help us understand how galaxies form, how stars form, and most importantly, how we formed, how life was created here on Earth, and how all of this relates to the rest of the universe. But until we discover more, that's really it. Check out the paper I mentioned in the description below, also, thank you, wonderful Kev Pluck, for creating such a wonderful simulation, and to all of the NASA researchers for creating this beautiful image, 
and I think I might actually have to borrow this as my new desktop wallpaper. Anyway, on that note, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and potentially consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.